Unboxing time. Often the radionuclides I present have been in our radioactive storage for years. Not phosphorus 32. That needs to be somewhat freshly ordered if one wishes to experiment with it. So some nucleides arrive in our lab in such manner. However, the transportation of radionuclides deserves its own video. But it seems to be quite well packed. This was a radioactive shipment, clearly labeled as such, so it was not simply delivered to us via DHL or other carriers. And the surface dose rate of the packaging is approximately 1 microsievert an hour. This is far from concerning or even dangerous. Let's unpack it and see a capsule with all the important information. 37 megabecquerels of phosphorus 32. This is a potassium dihydrogen phosphate solution. Those who remember the video about sulfur 35 know that the packaging was simply just plastic. Here the capsule is lined with lead from the inside. This is necessary because the beta radiation is much more higher in energy than that of sulfur 35. And this is not glue, it's just regular plastic that shines a bit more. Today let's talk about the applications in biology and then, as always, about the decay data, production and the decay Scheme. As many already know, phosphorus, especially as a phosphate, is vital to life. Just to list a few top candidates that one should know from school, DNA, which contains the phosphorus sugar backbone, ATP, where the P stands for phosphate, adenosine triphosphate, or phospholipids, which form the biomembrane of our cells, among other molecules. And it's precisely this biological importance that can be leveraged by using radioactive phosphor 32, which is chemically identical to normal phosphorus 31. And thus it signals through radiation what happens with phosphorus in the context of metabolic processes. For example, alpha phosphorus labeled deoxycytidine triphosphate, DCTP, is used to label DNA. The advantage of radionuclide labeling is that one doesn't chemically alter the molecule, so no large fluorescent molecules are added that could potentially hinder some interactions. Instead, you just simply have a radioactive version of the same atom inside. These fancy radionuclide labeled molecules cannot be simply sent to us, we are not going to use them anyways, but they are delivered on dry ice and I will link a good video about this topic from a biologist in the description. Let's see if I can persuade our biochemists to make a practical video using phosphor 32. But for relatively simple potassium dihydrogen phosphate, we tend to use it for classical nuclear chemical experiments. Maybe I can add a biology touch to it. Now onto the decay data. Half-life 14.268 days. Specific activity 1 times 10 to the power of 5 gigabecquerels per gram. It decays into stable sulfur 32 with a relatively high beta energy of 1710 kilo electron volts maximum and 695 kilo electron volts on average. The decay scheme is absolutely chaotic. Phosphorus 32 has a spin of plus one and decays 100% into the ground state of sulfur 32. No gamma lines are associated with this decay. I still have a few experiments planned with it, so I should start with them in the near future before it decays. However, because phosphorus 32 is such a high energy beta emitter, it's good lab practice to set up a plastic barrier to shield without obscuring vision and it still allows you to work with it. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Eric Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. Why wouldn't be a thin lead foil be a good idea for protecting yourself from phosphorus 32 radiation? With that question, goodbye.